Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today we're going to be talking about entropy. By the end of the video, you should be able to look at a chemical reaction and decide if the entropy has increased or decreased. That is, has the entropy been a positive change or a negative change? You should also be able to look at a list of molecules and decide which one has the highest molar entropy. First, though, let's just talk a little bit about what entropy is. There's all sorts of different ways to describe entropy. Some people call it more disorder, and that's reasonable. Higher entropy means more disorder. Some people will say that higher entropy states have less usable energy. Also true. The way we're going to think about it in this video is that higher entropy states are ones with more possible arrangements. So, for example, let's take this bottle of sand art, right? They've stacked sand grains in a very particular arrangement to give this picture of islands uh, that are mountains and the ocean around it, right? If I change the sand grains very much, I start to ruin the image. I can change them just a little and it'd be basically the same, but as soon as I change it much, that image is ruined. So that image is a very low entropy state. There's a very specific arrangement of sand grains that give me that image, and there's very few different ways that I can vary that. On the other hand, when I shake it, it's not going to give me some new image, it's going to give me a mixed bottle of sand. And the reason it gives me a mixed bottle of sand is because there's tons of different ways I can arrange sand grains and have it look like a mixed bottle of sand. So the mixed bottle of sand is really high in entropy because there's tons of different ways I can arrange those sand grains and have it look mixed, right? I can have my sand grains like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, and it'll just look mixed. So that means that a mixed bottle of sand is really high entropy because there's tons of different arrangements which look like a mixed bottle of sand. Whereas that image we see there is really low entropy because there's very few different arrangements that give us that. Okay, let's look at a, an example of a chemical system and think about it in this same way. The first thing we're going to look at is states of matter. So we're going to develop in this video a list of rules, this is our first one, about thinking about entropy of different molecules. And the first thing we learn is that gas has a higher entropy than liquid, which has a higher entropy than crystalline solid. Think about it. My gas has tons of different possible arrangements. My gas molecules are free to roam this entire flask, and that means they could be all over the place. Tons of different arrangements, hence higher entropy. My liquid can still float around, but it has to stay in the bottom of the flask. That means it has fewer arrangements than my gas, and hence is lower entropy. But if I take the solid, the solid has to stay in this rigid structure. Even fewer arrangements, and that makes my solid lower in entropy. So the first rule is gas is the highest entropy, then liquid, then solid. All right, let's take a look at dissolving something and see what that's like. Here's a solid. That's before dissolving, and then over here it's been dissolved. And as it dissolves, I see that all of my molecules split, split up and are floating all around in solution. Which one of those has a higher entropy? The water and the molecules separately, or the water and the molecules interspersed? Well, clearly this side has the higher entropy. Because those molecules that are dissolved can be all over the place. Once again, more possible arrangements. And that's what makes that a powerful way to think about entropy. More disorder is also correct, but it's a little harder to think about what that means. So saying more possible arrangements helps us pick out which system is going to have higher entropy. Alright, now let's take a look at molecules. As molecules get more massive, their entropy increases. As I go down this list, I'm adding carbons and hydrogens. So I go from CH4 to C2H4 to C2H6. I'm adding atoms, it's increasing the molar mass. And the entropy is also increasing. Why is that? Well, we can think about the fact that higher molar mass molecules have more electrons racing all around, right? And more electrons can be arranged in all sorts of different ways. So the more atoms I have, the more electrons I have, the higher entropy I'm going to have. So those guys all have entropy that depends on their molar mass. All right, lastly, let's look at chemical reactions. What we have to decide here is, are the products higher in entropy than the reactants or lower in entropy than the reactants? If the products are higher in entropy, that means we've gone through an entropy increase, right? Delta S has gotten higher because we started at low entropy and we went up to our reactants. That would mean we have a positive delta S. On the other hand, if our products have low entropy, lower than the reactants, that means we have a negative delta S. So these are the two rules here. If our products are higher in S, we have a positive delta S. If our products are lower in S, we have a negative delta S. How do we decide? Well, let's look at these two reactions. Here I have a gaseous molecule of water, and on this side I have a liquid molecule of water. So all that's happened there is my gaseous water has condensed. 
So this is like what happens on the side of a cold cup on a humid day. You see all these water droplets that have condensed from the air, called condensation. And that process changes the entropy. Well, how do I decide which one's higher? Well, it's the phase that's critical here. Gas is higher in entropy than liquid. That means this side is higher in entropy, and this side is lower in entropy. So I've dropped an entropy. My products are lower in S, so that means this has a negative delta S. All right, let's look down here where I've added hydrogen to C2H4 to get C2H6. What's happened there? Well, now I need to think about the number of gas moles. Here on this side, how many gas moles do I have? I have two moles of gas because I have one mole of H2 and one mole of C2H4. On this side, though, I just have one mole of C2H6 for one mole of gas. So which one's going to be higher in entropy, where I have more gas molecules bouncing all around or less gas molecules bouncing all around? Well, clearly, the side with less gas moles. And that's an important rule of thumb to keep in mind. In a chemical reaction, the side with fewer moles of gas is lower entropy. It's important enough for me to say that again. In a chemical reaction, the side with fewer moles of gas is lower in entropy. And that means this is lower. And that means, once again, I have a negative delta S. All right, now let's go ahead and apply these rules to a few problems. All right, first it says, put the following compounds in order of increasing entropy. It has carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and water. Well, in this case, the phases are all the same. The phases are all gas. And that means what I need to think about here is molar mass. Remember, that's my third rule here. Higher molar mass means higher entropy. And I won't go through the process of calculating the molar mass, but it turns out that CO has a molar mass of 28 grams per mole about. CO2 is 44 grams per mole. And water is 18 grams per mole. So that means the one with the most electrons, the one with the most atoms, is CO2. And that is the highest entropy. So that's going to be our highest in entropy. And the lowest in entropy is water. So if I put them in order of increasing entropy, I put H2O, which has less entropy than carbon monoxide, which has less entropy than CO2. So this is as I increase an entropy. And that's all based on molar mass. Now, if those were different phases, right, if I had CO2 liquid and CO2 gas, right, then I would think about phases. But because they're all in the same phase, I'm just going straight to that molar mass. All right, now let's look at some more chemical reactions. And this top reaction, I have calcium hydroxide solid going to calcium aqueous and sodium or in hydroxide aqueous. What's happening there? That is a process of dissolution. Calcium hydroxide has been dissolved. And remember that dissolved things have higher entropy than solid things. So which side's higher in entropy? Our products. And this side is lower. Well, if my products are higher in entropy, that means I have a positive, a positive delta S. All right, now I'm going from CO2 solid to CO2 liquid. So my solid CO2 melts into liquid CO2. When that happens, it goes to liquid, which is higher in entropy than solid. So that means this side is higher, and since my products are higher in entropy, that means I have a positive delta S. All right, last reaction. I have C2H6 reacting with oxygen to give me CO2 and water. That's just a combustion reaction. They're all gaseous, and so the question I have to ask myself, and this is the most important question when it comes to chemical reactions, is which side has more moles of gas? Well, this side has two and five moles, and they're both gas. If those are solids, right? You disclude them. So that's seven moles. This is four plus six, so that's ten moles. So which side has more moles of gas? The products. And that means the, these products are higher in entropy. So I have a positive delta S. So each one of these was positive delta S. That's sort of boring, alas. All right, so that's how we can predict the change in entropy for a reaction. We can just look at it, and from knowing these three rules, we can actually predict whether we're going to increase or decrease entropy. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. You can subscribe, and I recommend that you do. And you can also check out my channel for uh, lots of other chemistry videos. Thanks for watching.